Yeah. All right, well, yeah, that was a early on decision and therefore uh, mistakes were made. Learned some lessons. Uh, boats, especially plywood boats, fiberglass boats, really any boat flexes, glass doesn't. Um, it's also really hard to get a completely watertight seal between glass and wood and making sure that everything slopes away so that water doesn't pool anywhere. I just didn't do any of that for my design stuff. Plus, uh, I didn't really know how to make frames and I made the glass too big and the frames too small. So they had no strength to them. They gave out pretty quick. So we get these guys out of here. We bring in some plastic, which will flex, which we can stand on, which is a lot stronger. And uh, hopefully we'll have a nice dry winter, less dripping. Four of the windows out. The fourth one, Simon got really gung ho about and put way too much epoxy on, so we're struggling with that. What a dick. It's coming out. Etc. Etc. Hard work and whatnot. Sweat and dust. Chisel. <laughs> Not the camera? No. Dust off your face. <laughs> oh, it's in my eyes now, so thanks. All right, you're out of here. Skedaddle. Come on, damn it. <laughs> no. All right, for this sponsored bit of this episode, we're doing Bougie RV's starter solar kit. This is Don, this is Don's amazing shop that she lets me use. And Don is building an off-grid house on DeCourcy Island, a beautiful off-grid island, no ferry service, no power service, no water, no nothing. So you gotta do it yourself. And we are doing it ourselves. A lot of people are gonna get started with solar on probably a kit. This is a very simple kit. Um, the particular one, I think these ones are 180 watts a pop and we have two of them. Don hasn't built her house yet. So we gotta make this work uh, for her and her tools out on that island without anywhere to install it in. So instead, we got ourselves a bicycle trailer. Right, so I went down to Gabriella's little scrap shop. It's called Gyro. It's really cool. It's only open two days a week, but it's got uh, a lot of interesting things. Other people's projects, leftovers, bits and bobs. I picked up this bicycle trailer and stripped the box off of it, and it just so happens to fit this metal box. Now, this metal box I got for a whole whopping $5.00 down in the scrap metal pile, and when you know it, it's actually got an inverter in it. A really nice inverter, a $2,000 Xantrex SW4024 in there. Um, actually, it's a Trace one, sorry. It's a little bit older, uh, it's about 20 years old. Still does the trick, though. All right, since the idea is for it to be mobile, our lead asset batteries need straps. I've got these uh, old, uh, I don't know, tie down straps for a car. They're not particularly nice. So I'm gonna go chop these guys up and uh, make them just battery straps. All right, and like that, it's done. So as you can see, we have the Bougie RV solar panels up top. We still gotta put a piece of tape down the center so that it's watertight here. But then you just lift it up on these hinges and this little frame I made. And the wiring goes down in series. Now you wanna put them in series for this pack because first of all, we're running 24 volts. So it's nice to have uh, more than 24 volts to charge it up. Uh, so we're running them in series for that. Also, uh, Don's property is quite shady. And if you run the panels in series, the, anything that's running parallel has the same power input essentially, is limited to the same power inputs. It's only gonna put in as much as its weakest link. But when they're put in series, that's not the case. Uh, now, inside the box, we have two simple lead acid batteries, lots of ventilation around them, and we have our giant trace inverter. Power that on. You can just press, what, what button is it again? 
Wait, inverter. And now it's on. And that's it. 360 watts, it's nothing to laugh at. It's definitely enough to get by all summer long. But come winter time, you know, maybe uh, she's not there building quite so often. So this will still do the trick. It can charge up slowly while she's gone. And when she comes back, she'll have a full battery. And it's not gonna kill up with the day-to-day -day use of it, but uh, it's better than running a generator for little things. Portable power. A test now. We've got solar panels charging the battery array. That's always wired on, but we just flip it open here. And we'll just plug this in. Here we go. Works a treat. It's a great place to start. But yeah, if you're interested in checking out Bougie RV's starter kits, the link is in the description. Please give them a shout out to tell them I sent you. Uh, and uh, I'm sure Don's gonna love this thing. It's gonna be really sick. Uh, we'll show you guys progress on our cabin, our off-grid cabin eventually. But uh, yeah, this is going over to Decorsi Island and it's all thanks to Bougie RV, so. And like, you know, a little scrappy ingenuity. Say some, something wise. Does anyone have any idea why they built these docks so steep? We should talk to someone about that. This one right here? Yeah. Oh, it's steep? Yeah, it's real steep. You should fix it. Peter, don't fall for it. We'll make the same joke in the weeks. How's it going? <laughs> okay, I... Uh, we just did some decision making. Uh, we figured out exactly how we're gonna run some cleats or some uh, framing on the forward end for the windows and I just marked them all and Peter is cutting them out and Simon's sharpening some chisels and uh, things are happening. It's gonna be good, right honey? She doesn't give a fuck. Simon's off on a sea tow job, as always, uh, but I'm here wrapping up the project uh, that we started today. I just finished installing all of the 
horizontal pieces and next I'll have to install some upright frames that will act as the cleats or the, uh, the framing for the bulkhead that's going to go along the front of the cockpit here. Straight down from here is going to be um, the bulkhead. So then all of this space, which I am standing in right now, will be a deck box that will come up to about here. We'll come up to the height of this. So when you're on deck, you'll have somewhere nice to step up onto to get up onto the roof or a nice safe table all up one way, all the way across to get from port to starboard. Well, I'm stoked, I'm excited. Look at this, things are happening. Actually pretty nice looking at it from outside because you really get an idea of uh, the deck box layout and then the new window setup. So it'll be windows and deck boxes that'll go all the way down here. It's steamy for Genoa, but it, yeah. I'm not going to be able to Friday. Thank you, sir. We don't get to skip across the water at 22 knots or over. No, no, it's steamy. fun going fast. Okay? It's ridiculous going yeah. fast. Yeah. You know, what do you cruise at? Six. Six? Yeah. What's in there for a power plant? Hey, a brand new uh, Beta Marine. Oh, awesome. Uh, you know the Beta Marine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Just mow it flat. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, bro. <laughs> That's so <laughs> sick. Crazy. That's they, they... Fire. How e Can you just. i see you later, man. Alright, Peter's out of here. He just dropped off some uh, epoxy pumps, which is leaking all over Simon's table. Sweet! Um, and this is because, yeah, I'm doing all the epoxy work today, but Simon doesn't have the pumps, so it's brilliant. Uh, and Simon and Peter are going to end up connecting later in the week, so... Brilliant. Now I can get to work. Pretty straightforward. Um, otherwise, uh, just relaxing and drinking coffee. Um, which I can't find where I put it. Uh, and the internet's down and it's cold in here. Um, because of the lack of windows. And that's, that's what happens when you basically live in a gazebo. If I did. Unit. All right, so this is the new window material for my boat. This is acrylic, 13 millimeters thick. Uh, each one of these four by eight sheets is about $700. So I really need to not screw this up. I've already screwed up a few things by doing too much work for CETO this week and as a result fell behind on this project and then my weather window closed and I've now completely drenched the inside of my boat with rainwater and destroyed several things including a lot of the really expensive uh, plywood that I just installed. So we'll be redoing that and uh, we'll get these windows in first so that at least we could stop the onflow of rainwater because um, apparently it's just going to rain for the next four or five, six months, I guess, or it's winter. It's coming to winter now. <laughs> All right, I got the last piece cut that I can get cut. Uh, I'll impart a little bit of my hard won uh, lessons here on you guys so that it'll be go a little bit better for you. Seems the tape makes a little bit of a difference, especially in keeping the bits of plastic from melting together as they get thrown out by the saw blade. Uh, the blade has a lot of teeth and carbide fitted teeth on the ends of them and uh, that seemed to make a huge difference, although I know that the metal cutting blades are pretty much exactly the same. Uh, don't know if one's cheaper than the other really. Acrylic ironically has almost no bend to it, so if you're cutting it and your surface of which you're supporting with isn't totally flat, it's really easy to crack it. So originally I tried to space it out with some uh, pieces of wood and I put some pressure in the wrong spot and cracked a piece. Luckily it was just an off cut, but uh, what I did instead is laid it on my shop floor, just set the blade to be about 
a sixteenth of an inch deeper than needed to be and scored a couple marks into my already very scored floor. So no big deal. But uh, that was the only way that I could support the acrylic fully while cutting it. Um, and the issue of course with that is that it uh, warms up the working area and that's what you want to avoid with acrylic is overheating it because apparently that's when it'll also crack. Luckily it didn't happen to me, but that's how I got it done. Still got to go back to the store and buy more though, so not really a full success. Okay, it's been another long day. We got the front of here kind of built dish. Well, not obviously not the lockers. I'm standing where the lockers should be, but uh, we've got all this all the fillets all done. Now I temporarily screwed in all of the acrylic windows and I just now was trying to pop them back out and every single stainless screw is snapping. It could just be because it's been a long day and I'm tired and the world likes to kick me while I'm down, but it could also be just like a weird chemical thing where like stainless screws just do not fare well around acrylic. That doesn't make any sense to me, but can't argue with the evidence. Don't know what the hell's going on here. Mirror tint, and uh, we're gonna try and get this right. I'm gonna try, not, try not to screw this up. Okay, it's not gone over really smoothly. The glass coming out and instantly getting a freak storm right after ruined my stove, fried a couple other things on the boat. There's water everywhere. It's finally drying, drying out, but that tint job looks like absolute dog shit. Um, so I think what I'm gonna try to do is install the windows without the tinting and use painter's tape to keep the um, Sycaflex from going everywhere like it's going right now uh, and then once the windows are in then I will try and tint them once they're in and have the tinting just go as close up to the uh, Sycaflex as I can get it to go up to and hopefully that'll look clean but getting it to go under and with the Sycaflex is not working it's just as soon as I start putting Sycaflex on it or putting the screw pressure near it it's all bubbling up and peeling not to mention the Sycaflex is going everywhere. And uh, yeah, I'm miserable. I'm absolutely fucking miserable. But it's uh, Friday. So I'm gonna continue on and hopefully the second one goes in a little bit better than this. Otherwise, I'm taking a long walk off a short pier. I decided to use the life cock. Um, apparently it's slightly better than Sycaflex. We'll find out. Um, I've had pretty good luck with Sycaflex. It has let go in some places around the epoxy. It hasn't set perfectly, but uh, it's been okay. And uh, we'll see if this is any better. Really just like Sycaflex, super nasty to work with, uh, super unpleasant. And uh, something about the squeeze bottle means that it only comes out when you're not squeezing it. Uh, and as soon as you put it down, it squeegees black goo all over your decks. So uh, definitely keep a lot of extra rags on hand because uh, that was nasty and disgusting. But the windows are in, and uh, once this has had time to mostly dry, we're gonna go and uh, peel up the paper, and it should make for a beautiful, beautiful new set of windows up front. God, I hope so.
All right, I started this episode in a t-shirt and shorts and finishing it off in a coat, freezing my niblets off. Uh, the windows are in. Um, it's been an ongoing process of just like fine tuning them, getting them exactly what I would like. Uh, we installed one of the latching hardwares here that uh, I don't like. It's not working really well. So we're ordered some new stuff and it's uh, delayed because of Christmas and everything else coming up. Um, the automotive trim is working well and the ceiling uh, at the other windows is fantastic. So we're just dealing right now with the opening windows and getting them to seal up perfectly airtight. Um, and that way I don't lose any extra heat. Uh, the plastic is really nice to deal with once it's installed, once it's uh, in place, it feels a lot better. It uh, seemingly doesn't transmit quite as much heat through the glass as the old glass did. So that's uh, that's a progress. And um, yeah, they're really bright, really easy to look through. And I'm thinking of totally scrapping uh, the tint entirely because uh, even anywhere towards dusk these winter months, I haven't been able to see almost anything through that tint and it's barely tinted at all. So uh, that is not a good sign. We do not need that. We've also still got to make a forward hatch. So that'll be coming up in another episode. And a big thanks to Bougie RV for sending out the uh, starter solar pack, um, which set up over onto Corsi Island with Dawn. She's using it to power her tools over there and it's working out fantastically. If you're interested in setting up your own starter solar array, please check out the link in the description. Use the offer code Finding Simon, save a couple bucks and let them know that I sent you. All right, that's it. See you guys next episode. Thanks a lot. Bye.